who came to tell us that Jesus would come and be with us. They told us to prepare a way for Jesus and listen to God, telling us to turn to him. Let us prepare the way for God in our lives. Thank you, Danny. I now invite you to come forward. Right, second, reading from the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your dress of sorrow and distress. Put on the beauty of the glory of God forever. Wrap the cloak of the integrity of God around you. Put the diadem of the glory of the eternal on your head, since God means to show your splendor to every nation under heaven. Since the name God gives you forever will be peace through integrity, and honour through devotedness. Arise, Jerusalem, stand on the heights, and turn your eyes to the east. See your sons reassembled from west and east at the command of the Holy One, jubilant that God has remembered them. Though they left you on foot with enemies for an escort, now God brings them back to you, like royal princes carried back in glory. For God has decreed the flattening of each high mountain of the everlasting hills, the filling of the valleys to make the ground level, 
so that Israel can walk in safety under the glory of God. And the forests and every fragrant tree will provide shade for Israel at the command of God. For God will guide Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and integrity for escort. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Every time I pray for all of you, I pray with joy, remembering how you have helped to spread the good news from the day you first heard it right up to the present. I am quite certain that the one who began this good work in you will see that it is finished when the day of Christ Jesus comes. God knows how much I miss you all, loving you as Christ Jesus loves you. My prayer is that your love for each other may increase more and more and never stop improving your knowledge and deepening your perception so that you can always recognize what is best. This will help you to become pure and blameless and to prepare you for the day of Christ when you will reach the perfect goodness which Jesus Christ produces in us for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of the lands of Iturea and Trachonitis, Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, and in the wilderness, he went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened and rough roads made smooth and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I attended St. Peter's Roman Catholic Secondary School in Gloucester from the late 70s to the mid 1980s. It was a good school, very similar to St. Augustine's uh, here in Trowbridge with a sixth form, and I enjoyed my time there very much. Each classroom had a speaker in it, and from the headmaster's office, announcements could be made and often daily prayers would be led from the headmaster's office so that the whole school could hear the announcements. And sometimes the names of pupils who might have been in trouble were called out to go and attend to see the headmaster. Thankfully, my name was never amongst them. I think I just got away with things. One afternoon in the late 70s or 90, early 1980, I can't remember exactly when, we had an address by Monsignor Roach, who was the very stern but very nice parish priest of St. Peter's at the time. He was a cork man, and he announced on one Friday afternoon, as we were just about to, all ready to go home, he said, there is a film being shown in the ABC. It's called Monty Python and the life of Brian. I do not want any pupil from this school to go and see this film. Well, it was the worst thing he could have done, really, because the following morning, myself and many other pupils from St. Peter's were in the queue to go and watch the film in the cinema. I must say I enjoyed the film and always have done whenever I've seen it. Yeah, it borders a little bit upon being blasphemous, but it is all about Brian, whose life runs parallel to the life of Christ, if you've not seen it. Now, the final scene in the film has Eric Idle, the character who Eric Idle is playing. He's saying, come on, Brian, it could, it could cheer up, it could be worse. Now, Brian, at this stage, is crucified on a cross. And Eric Idle starts up the song, Always Look On the Bright Side of Life. You've seen it, Mark. It is a very enjoyable film. And I was reminded of that film when I was looking at the readings for this Sunday. Because Advent is indeed a time when we are called to look on the bright side of life. In fact, we have four people speaking to us of happier days. Four people speaking to us of joyous days. Four people speaking to us of 
of a time when there will be no more sadness, no more tears, no more suffering. The prophet Baruch in the first reading tells Jerusalem to take off your dress of sorrow and distress and put on the beauty of the glory of God forever. The author of the psalm says today, what marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. And St. Paul speaks to the people of Philippi and he says to them, every time I pray for all of you, I pray with joy, remembering how you have helped to spread the good news. And then from the, from the gospel according to St. Luke, we hear of the historical place in which the coming of John the Baptist and Christ would be found in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, etc. But then we hear those voice, the voice of the prophet Isaiah, who says, A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. All of humankind shall see the salvation of God. There is a deep sense of expectation, a deep sense of joy, a deep sense of hope in all those words. But of course we do live in a world which is often full of darkness and suffering and pain. We can only think about these last 18 months to 20 months of this pandemic and the tragedy that that has brought into people's lives in so many ways. We could also think about the people who live in the depths and sorrows of bereavement, the people who live in poverty, both home and abroad, those who have recently suffered through the volcano in Indonesia. We can think of so many instances and it can be easy for us to despair, which is why the church, I think, gives us this wonderful season of Advent, of a time when we can indeed look forward to God's kingdom, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of restoration, a kingdom of joy. And so indeed for us as a people, during this season of Advent, we are always to look on the bright side of life. We stand and profess our uh, I one God, the Father of the maker of man and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one of Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father in all the ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us, men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, it was the count of the Virgin Mary, and he came down. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will now be And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken to me the prophets. whole church, that Christians everywhere may, by the power of the Holy Spirit, live up to their baptismal calling to help spread the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the leaders of nations, that they serve all their people with honesty, justice and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
those who experience loneliness at this time, that they may look forward to the joy of the coming of the Christ child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who experience poverty at home and abroad, may they find support in the midst of their need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before God those who have died, those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week, the diocese is praying for our intentions at St. John Baptist and St. Bernadette. May we remember that God calls each one of us by name and that we are special to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask Mary, Mother of the Church, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. In the silence of our hearts, we turn to our Father with our personal intentions. Loving Father, in faith and love we bring you our prayers, confident that you will hear us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, have we pray to our rescue, with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For Jesus assumed his first coming, the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the desire and form long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. When he comes again in glory and majesty, and all this at last may be manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise which now we dare to await. And so the angels and archangels we sing the heaven your glory, as without end we are Welcome them into the light of your grace. Have mercy on us. 
us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have preached you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son.
Pray together our hearts of spiritual communion. Join with us, join with those who are joining us on the live stream and on YouTube today. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments of your sins. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since many hours at this moment have you been sacramented, help me spiritually into their hearts. Amen. Go for the last season. Amen. Amen. 